those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the one of whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Now, John wore clothing of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then the people of Jerusalem and all Judea were going out to him, and all the region along the Jordan, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not presume to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance. But one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and will gather his wheat into the granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. The Gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. A few years ago, I attended a conference in Davenport, Iowa, at a Lutheran church that had just renovated and built a new sanctuary. It seated 750 people. Yeah, I think that's huge. And it was beautiful. Beautiful stained glass, everything about it was lovely, and the conference was wonderful. I sat with other pastors and lay people, and we worshiped, and we listened to wonderful speakers. It was very renewing. And on the last morning, my friend Katie, also a pastor, came and sat next to me. And she said, I hate this sanctuary. Haven't you noticed that everything here is off kilter? It's driving me nuts. Nothing is square. <laughs> now, my husband, who has just hung about 100 pictures in our house, can tell you I'm a person who likes things squared up. Right, Paul? Yeah. That's how I like it, too. But I had not noticed. But as I sat there that morning, thinking about what she said, and of course not listening to the speakers anymore, <laughs> I realized she was absolutely right. The ceiling beams ran north to south, but even the lights on the ceilings were in even or odd numbers. There were about 10 on one side and 11 on another. Then the whole floor plan was tilted to the northwest. There were three sections of pews, and between section one and two was a big main aisle. And between two and three was a moderate, smaller aisle. And up front, a large, beautiful pipe organ set way in the back at the front of the sanctuary. And a little bit closer to the front was a raised altar area like this. And then even closer, off to that northwest corner, was the pulpit. Why had they done this? She was absolutely right. It was all off center. And you know that wasn't an accident. That plan had to have been voted on, you know, a million times. <laughs> Why did they do it? And as I sat there thinking about this, I came to my own answer. I never did hear from them <laughs> what their answer was. But I sat in that pew feeling off kilter in the room. And I realized as I was sitting there that I was staring at, mesmerized, this magnificent, simple cross 
that hung above the pulpit. Everything in that off-kilter sanctuary was aligned to the cross. I love that idea, to be aligned to the cross. And that is really the heart of what John is talking to us about in today's gospel lesson when he calls for us to repent. Repentance is to align ourselves with God's values, the ones we see in the cross, the values of peace and mercy and love. Now, every year we come back to Advent and we are told to repent, right? And every week we come back to church and we repent because we live in a world where it's easy for us to get off kilter and out of sync. And we need the practice and the reminder to align ourselves to the cross and to God's values. I'm of the opinion that we're pretty good at the first blush of repentance, which is feeling sorry that we did something wrong, right? A little bit of regret. I think traditionally that's how we think of repentance, feeling bad and apologizing. But repentance is more than that. Repentance is more than I am sorry. It is aligning ourselves with the cross. And we know this because repentance comes from a God who loves us who comes to us in a manger and goes to the cross to die for us. We are not called to live in regret. Sometimes we're so good at regret that that's where we stay, right? Which leads to guilt, which leads to shame, which can be paralyzing for us. But our God, who created the universe, loves us so much we are not designed to live in shame. We are designed to live aligning ourselves to the cross that we may share God's peace and love and mercy with this world. So we practice every week and every Advent. Now you might be thinking, well, Pastor Amy, what does that look like in my life to align myself with the cross? And I will not pretend like there is a formula. There isn't. Each one of you has a different set of gifts and talents and passions that God has given you for a purpose. Jesus Christ saved the world, but you are called to live in the joy of that salvation in your corner of it. That's our job as people of faith. What would it mean if you took the time to align yourself in the, with the cross and live in that joy that it brings? What would it mean in your own heart, in your own home, in your own community, if you lived in the peace and love and mercy that God offers you? That is the work of Advent. That is the work of repentance, not regret. Regret might start it off. But repentance is to come to God's way of thinking. And we practice it every week. <laughs> we'll keep practicing it every Advent, year after year. Because none of us are perfect at it. We all need to work at it. So this Advent season, my brothers and sisters, I say to you, repent. Repent with joy, knowing that given to you is the most precious gift, the gift of the cross, the gift that comes with love and mercy and peace. Amen.